Today I want to talk about Jacob, another Bible character. But before we go along, let us have a word of prayer. We thank you, dear Father, that we can reflect upon your man servant Jacob even at this time. May we learn some lesson from what his life was all about in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we learn from our scriptures looking at Genesis chapter 25 and onward, even up to verse to chapter 37, and even we would see Jacob being mentioned further in chapter 47 when he would have blessed his children and grandchildren. We see that Jacob from the inception or conception, Jacob was involved in fighting against his brother, even in the tummy of his mother Rebecca. Jacob, in his early days, when he was born, Jacob held on to the heel of his brother Esau. So we know that Jacob was going to be trouble from even the beginning of time. Yes, indeed, he was trouble because we see very early that the scripture record that Jacob uh, sold his brother lentil, a meal of lentil, for the brother's birthright. So Isa sold his birthright for a meal of a meal of lentils because Isa felt that he was so hungry that he could not have lived without eating this bowl of lentil. And Jacob, being the schemer that he was, was very, very good at scheming to get something as important as one's birthright. Subsequently, we see that Esau uh, was being robbed again by Jacob because earlier clock God told uh, Rebekah that the younger would be more or less, uh, would be served by the older. So she knew for a fact that Esau would have to be servant to Jacob. And therefore, she concocted a scheme when she realized that uh, Isaac, being an old man at the time, wanted to bestow the blessing upon Esau. But she concocted a scheme with Jacob so that Jacob received the blessing from his father. Fast forward to this, we see that Esau became so angry that at the end of the day, he decided that he was going to get rid of Jacob. And mother overhearing this made sure that she encouraged Jacob to get out of the way and Jacob was sent to live with his uncle Laban, the, As the Syrian. As we look at it, we see that Jacob actually went to live with Laban and on his way there, the Lord gave him a dream which we refer to as Jacob's ladder dream whereby Jacob saw angels ascending and descending from earth to heaven on a ladder. It was a guarantee that Jacob was being protected and God virtually showed Jacob that throughout his life he is going to protect him. Jacob subsequently met someone who knew more scheme than him and that was Laban because when Jacob was in Laban's place, Jacob fell in love with Rachel and he was promised that if he worked seven years, he would be given, Rachel would be given to him in marriage. However, at the end of the seven days, seven years, uh, Leah, the elder sister, was switched in the place of Rachel. Jacob, because he loved Rachel so much, decided that he was going to work another seven years for Rachel. This did happen, but in the meanwhile, uh, what we see here is that Leah start having children. Rachel, by the time she got into the uh, marriage situation, was barren. And it troubled her a lot because Jacob, all his love, was more or less going towards Leah. She subsequently decided that she's going to use uh, her handmaid to make her a wife to, 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 to Jacob. As we go along, we see that eventually, after all the ups and downs with children bearing and so on, the Lord opened the womb of Rachel and she had Joseph and Benjamin. At the end of all of these children making and all like that, 
Jacob felt that he had done enough with his uncle in terms of labor, etc. Now, we would note that whilst Jacob was there working for his uncle, Laban prospered. His cattle, his herd increased tremendously and so on. And he knew that it was only because of Jacob's presence. Now, Jacob's asked for his payment and the uh, Laban decided that, yes, there's a way that this could be done. At the end of the day, Jacob ended up with a lot of herd, a lot of cattle, etc. And Laban was too pleased, neither was his son. Jacob decided to leave one day with his wife and children and his herds and so on. And Laban was too happy about it. He traced him down. But at the end of the day, it worked out peacefully because God made that provision for Jacob of, with the protection that he had around Jacob. There was only reconciliation between Jacob and his uncle Laban. Fast forward and then we see as Jacob decided to continue, he got the message that Esau was coming. We know what was the last encounter between Jacob and Esau. So Jacob was afraid that Esau would come to destroy him. And he decided, divided his cattle and his possession, his children and so on, and made provision so that he would be the last to meet Jacob. However, the Lord would have intervened and put things in place. We also see that whilst he was there organizing himself, during the middle of the night, he encountered the angel of the Lord. And we see that a fight ensued. And Jacob, at the end of the day, was blessed because he decided that he's not going to end except he was blessed. He was indeed blessed by the Lord, and his name was no longer called uh, Jacob, which meant usurper, but instead his name was called Israel, one who struggled with God and was successful. Fast forward that, reconciliation with, with, with Esau took place, and now he was left on his own traveling. He came to a place called Sechem, or Sechem, and there his daughter Dinah was being raped by Hamo, uh, the son of the, the leader of the country and so on. And his son decided that that was not going down like that. They decided that they would destroy all the men in that village, and they did so. Jacob continued moving on, and we see subsequently that Jacob settled down and became a good father where he was taking care of his children. His, his sons were out there seeing about the cattle and so on. But he had this special son, Joseph, who he loved this much. And Joseph, whilst being home, Joseph uh, was being treated in a certain way which caused jealousy. At the end thereof, Joseph was deemed to be killed by wild animals. The story that his, his brothers gave to Jacob. Many, many years after, when Egypt was the land that was supplying the then known world with food, Israel had to send his sons to get food in Egypt. There they discovered Jacob, uh, Joseph being the governor of the land. Jacob, Joseph subsequently sent to his father. There his father remained for the rest of his life until he died. What we can learn about Jacob is that Jacob was a man, even though he was a usurper, even though he had his rough time, God still had mercy upon him. And he subsequently came to understand and appreciate God. And as a result of that, he turned his life around and was an example even in the hall of faith. Jacob loved God and was an example Jacob turned his life around, not by might, nor by power, but by God's spirit. So by God bless us as we learn lessons about Jacob here, that we too can turn despite where we may have been or what we may have become. Thank you, dear Father, for Jacob's story. Thank you for the way he turned his life around. Thank you for your love and your mercy towards a sinner who would give up himself to you. You can turn anyone around. Once we allow you to do so, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.